Hello there friends and welcome for today's BG3 guide we have my very first ever College of Valor Bard build. This actually makes for the tankiest Bard character possible because you do have proficiency with both medium armor and also shields. And we'll be going for the classic sword and board style to combine not only extreme armor class higher than 30, 35 even, for a very versatile character that can not only attack enemies at melee, tank, with great support and even damage from your bard abilities. As a matter of fact, the Valor Bard even has a unique ability to directly enhance the armor class of allies, so you can also help other party members avoid hits instead of just tanking everything yourself. And by virtue of still being a bard, you are also a full spellcaster, with many powerful spells, especially for crowd control, so that you can easily take most enemies out of battle before they can do anything, while still getting access later to powerful tools such as heals, summons and so on. So without further ado, let us get into our College of Valor Bard build first with character creation. For race, amusingly enough, gnomes do make some of the best tanks, this way you can easily tank physical strikes, ranged attacks, and of course, even crowd control effects by virtue of having advantage on all mental saving throws. Besides that, it's just a classic wood elf or wood half elf for higher movement. Githyanki can be picked for higher skills as well, but you'll have decent enough charisma for all the important dialogue checks. For spells and cantrips, as always, I already have a best spells guide you can check to the side here, so let's keep it simple now. Well, Blade Ward is the must have, is one of the ultimate tanking abilities, and ideally you want to prep buff of this before battle starts for full physical damage resistance just like that, even as early as level 1. It's that good. You can also go with Vicious Mockery if you want, it is Bard unique after all. It's just that eventually the effect won't really matter, and you'll be much better off just attacking with your longsword or casting spells. Speaking about spells, Healing Word of course, for healing as a bonus action, Fairy Fire, one of the ultimate enemy debuffing spells, that will last you through the entire game, actually. Sleep, of course, which is the best crowd control very early. And you can also go with Heroism if you want. The starting instrument is just for flavor, but the loot is pretty cool. At least animations-wise. And as far as your stats, 16 Charisma at character creation should be more than enough. Charisma will help not only with dialogue checks, but of course, also, your very own crowd control effects, because bards are charisma-based casters. Ideally, you want to go all out into dexterity instead for the ultimate armor class value possible. So assign a plus 1 to charisma and 16, then a plus 2 to dexterity, 8 strength because it's completely unnecessary for this build, 14 constitution, and I would also dump intelligence for 17 starting dexterity. And as far as your skills, well, the most important dialogue ones based on Charisma, of course, so Deception, Intimidation, and Persuasion. You can also go with Performance, as it is thematic to the Bard class, but there aren't that many checks about it in the game, as opposed to other skills like Insight and the main dialogue ones. Speaking about Insight, it's why I recommend you often go with the Guild Artisan background for free proficiency with Insight and Persuasion. And Insight is the second most used of them all, I think. This way you can specialize into everything here. Or remove performance and get something like perception instead. By virtue of having high dexterity, you can also go with acrobatics. And even take care of the, well, trap disarming and lock picking checks in the game. But for that, it's of course better to actually spend the proficiency point into sleight of hand. At the second level, you'll not only get the Jack of All Trades feature, which helps increasing skills you are not proficient in, but most importantly, Song of Rest, one of the best abilities in the game, especially depending on your party composition. For more spells, might as well go with Long Strider because it is infinite casts out of battle, works on everyone, and increases your movement speed. For level 3, we have access to the second level spells, but they're mostly rather poor. Ideally, you just want to upcast Fairy Fire, at least so early. 
Cloud of Daggers can work early on, however, for some nice area of effect, lingering damage. Hold Person can become good, but only later. And of course, we want to pick our subclass, this time College of Valor, which makes for the best, tankiest bard possible, because as I said, you'll have medium armor and also shield proficiency added for free. Not only that, but even full martial weapons proficiency, for sword bards, it's only medium armor. Right now, you'll also get your upgraded combat inspiration ability, which unlike all the other bards, can also enhance your ally's weapon damage, or most importantly, armor class. And this can go to a rather big amount, even up to 1d10 later. For level 4, any other cantrip, might as well go with light, because it's very useful, or friends. And you might as well grab Hold Person now, it's only going to get better with more spell levels, because of hitting multiple targets. For the first feat, you have a few different options. My preferred pick is Alert, of course, because this character can be good at both tanking and also crowd control. And with this and your super high dexterity, you essentially always act 100% of the time before any enemy, regardless of RNG-based initiative rolls. But of course, you might also prefer to increase your dexterity now, or even charisma if you want to have your spellcasting focus. Even Sharpshooter can work, because you do have very high dexterity, but if you go with a ranged weapon, well, you won't be tanking much by virtue of being away from enemies. Alert is my preferred pick by far. At level 5, we'll get an increase to our Bardic Inspiration for higher AC or attack damage. And at long last, level 3, spells which are absolutely busted for a Bard. Ideally, you want Glyph of Warding and the Sleep variant, because it does not require concentration at all, it's one of the few sources of crowd control in the game that's like this. And you might as well replace an earlier spell, like for example Sleep, which at this point is rather useless, even Cloud of Daggers, for another crowd control, Hypnotic Pattern. It does require concentration, but hits a much bigger area than Glyph of Warding. I'd rather Glyph of Warding, however, by virtue of not needing concentration. So you can of course combine it with more fun stuff, like let's say Hold Person. Even Hypnotic Pattern at the same time, if you want. At level 6, we'll get our second attack per action, just like a sword Bard. And for more spells, anything you want, including something like Seeing Visibility, unless you want to go through <laughs> the lobotomy in the game that gives you this for free. Now, from level 7 onwards, you can start multiclassing, for example, into, let's say, Wizard, as just one level is enough for you to learn all of the nice Wizard spells from Scrolls, which can provide you with more armor class, I just don't think it's necessary, even without, let's say, mirror image or blur, well, you can still have higher than 30 AC, which is definitely more than enough. I'd rather remain a pure bard, because you'll still get some nice goodies as far as the class, especially at level 10, with the special free spell selection from any class. Anyways, for level 4 spells, also anything you want, because you just want to be upcasting earlier variants of spells, including level 3 ones. Might as well go with Greater Invisibility, because you can combine it with your Sleep Glyph of Warding. For level 8, any other spell as well. And for our second feat, my preferred pick would be Ability Improvement and Dexterity to max it out. It's more initiative and also more armor class, even more damage and attack rolls, because the best weapon we have in the game is finessable. Best for this build, at least. But as I mentioned before, you can also go with Charisma instead. For level 9, we have level 5 spells, and they're also kinda poor <laughs> compared to earlier ones. You might as well grab either Hold Monster or Mass Cure Wounds. You can even replace a previous spell. I mean, Cloud of Daggers can be replaced way earlier than this, because you won't really be using it much, and get both of them, so Hold Monster and Mass Cure Wounds. Level 10 is huge for a bard, you'll not only increase your bardic inspiration even further for 1d10, get extra skill proficiency, ideally persuasion and let's say intimidation, but most importantly the unique magical secrets feature, which of course lets you pick almost any other spell from any other class. This can of course go a number of different ways, depending on what you want to specialize your character further. For spell damage, for example, Call Lightning is absolutely amazing, as you can combine it with your Sleep Glyph of Warding for crowd control as well. Meanwhile, if you want a bigger defensive focus, 
then Mass Healing Ward, and also the Paladin Exclusive Warden of Vitality spell, which pretty much means you'll never ever run out of healing. My preferred picks, however, are first Conjure Elemental, because right at level 11 you have access to the strongest elemental in the game, and summon through this the Water Elemental Myrmidon. It's really a powerful summon that can even mass heal you every single turn, forever. And well, since I really like summons, I'd also go with Animate Dead. It's just that I think for other spells, like for example Spirit Guardians, you could just have a Cleric on your party like Shadow Heart do it way before, starting from level 5. But that's just me, I really like summons. As I mentioned, you have a lot of options here. And I provided you with them all. For more normal spells, anything, it doesn't matter. The same for a cantrip. Now, at level 11, you can multiclass this character into, let's say, a fighter, if you want to go for the action surge ability for yet another action on a short rest. It's still quite amazing, however. As it translates to, well, another spell or two extra attacks for that turn. Paladin can also work if you want smites, but rather late at this point. I'd rather just keep our character a pure Valor Bard, however, I really like pure build sometimes. <laughs> and I've done these other combinations in the past before. Any other spells now, including level 6 ones, as I said once again, you just want to upcast the earlier spells you have. And by level 12, by virtue of remaining a pure Bard, we have access to the last feat. You have some choices, as I mentioned before, but I'd rather get more Charisma now for more DC on our spells. And that's it for normal build progression. Well, alright, now let us cover gear for our Sword and Shield College of Valor Bard tank. For the helmet slot, the choices early are, as always, the same. Haste Helm during Act 1 for higher movement. You can, however, also go with the Warped Headband of Intellect when interacting with NPCs just for higher skill checks in dialogue. Wapira's Crown can also work for this character early because you do have the Healing Word spell as early as level 1. For the second act, if you want better criticals, Dark Justice Your Helmet or the Covert Cowl. But ultimately, during Act 3, definitely the Helm of Baldurin for the highest AC boost possible, even nice enough regeneration, immunity to stun and even critical hits. For cloaks, I'd say you have two options. My preferred pick is the normal Cloak of Protection for higher AC and saves, but you can also go with the Cloak of Displacement if you prefer. I just think you have such high AC that you might as well leave this to another character. For armors, very early during Act 1, you might as well go with the medium variant of the Adamantine Armor, for good enough AC and also some damage reduction. Don't go with the heavy variant, however, because you won't be able to equip it by default. Starting from the second chapter, however, you simply want to focus on all of the best medium armors that have full, uncapped, dexterity bonus to AC. Starting with the 1T scale male and later for the third act, the armor of agility. For gloves, wondrous gloves definitely, always. Not only for higher AC, but it even has further benefits for a bard character with an extra use of your bardic inspiration. For boots, well, we want more AC even, so the evasive shoes. For amulets, something fun early on is the Amulet of the Harpers, so that you have shield for free, which can increase your AC even further, even if it's only once per long rest. Of course, there's always Broodmother's Revenge, if you want higher damage on hit. And later, during Act 3, there's always the Amulet of Greater Health, for the highest hit point score possible as a bard. Even the Amulet of the Devout, if you want a bigger focus on the DC of your spells. And of course, there's other gear choices that also help with this, such as Fistbreaker Helm during the second act, and the Hood of the Weave for the third chapter, and Helldust Gloves for Act 3. Four Rings, the Ring of Protection for higher AC, and I also have the Strange Conduit Ring here for higher damage, because we'll always be concentrating on something, I suppose. But you can also go with the Caustic Band at Act 1 for higher damage on hit, Crusher's Ring, also Act 1 for higher movement. And later, during the second act, the Rescue Ring for a heavier focus on your melee attacks. For free advantage, of course, or you can just, well, debuff the enemies with Fairy Fire for the same purpose. Even the Shapeshifter's Boom Ring can work during any act by highly increasing your skills. 
It's great for dialogue, for example. Now let's discover weapons and consumables. For weapons, there's really only one choice, I'd say, for this build, as far as the best one. And it is, of course, the Fowler Aluve Long Sword. It is very unique in that, despite being a long sword, it is also a finessable weapon, which means it fully scales for both attack rolls and damage based on your dexterity score instead of strength. And well, we have amazing dexterity. It's found as early as Act 1, and even has one of the best abilities in the game, the Melody, which you can use for singing if you want to buff allies, but most importantly Shriek I find is the better variant, because it increases the damage all enemies take, and even highly reduces their mental saving throws, which helps a lot when it comes to proccing your very own crowd control effects. It is really an amazing weapon overall. And you can always enchant it further if you want, through either the Drake Throat Glaive, Draconic Elemental Ability, and or upcast variants of the magic weapon spell. Drake Throat is more than enough, however, I'd say. As for shields, early on you can kinda go with anything you want, but ultimately, either Catheric Shield for the bonus to spell DC, or Viconia's Walking Fortress for the highest AC and some good enough benefits. As far as weapons, well, that shot, if you want, a bigger focus on melee attacks for higher critical chance. But as usual, the bow of awareness during the earlier acts for higher initiative. And I often forget to mention this, but during Act 3 you also have a bow that increases your initiative even further. The Hell Rider Long Bow. It's just that I usually prefer that shot. And for consumables, as always, the Elixir of Bloodlust, it is really that good and works for both more spells or more attacks. What's not to love, right? Well, alright friends, so this was it for my College of Valor Bard Tank build. If you found this guide useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe and also consider becoming a channel member if you can. I always appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.